I'm Tom Hattrick and today at McCoonie Oz we're going to show you how to solder a new end onto a throttle cable. What I've got here today is what we use and you're going to see a quick example of how we do it. First off is a soldering pot which is by far the better way to uh, redo your nipple. Um, in the pot we, uh, this is a brand new spare one we have, always have a spare one on hand. Uh, and just a solder bar which are fairly cheaply, uh, buy this from a welding shop, under $10. When you buy your solder you want to be making sure that the solder mixture is 60% tin and 40% lead. Uh, usually it's the other way around in most of the more popular stuff, so sometimes they'll have to get it in for you. And all you do is you'll heat up a pot and, and melt the bar down into it to fill up the pot for dipping. Now at home obviously you don't want to be spending the expense of buying a pot, but if you do potter around with old motorbikes and you know, you're going to be doing cables from time to time, this is something that uh, sort of thing that you can make up um, at home. Just a bit of pipe welded to a bit of flat steel and in the shed you can put this on a little gas burner or even go into the kitchen and put it on the cooktop and heat it up and that'll melt all your solder and you just go and uh, dip your cable in your baker's flux and, uh, and then just dip it in the solder and the job done. Really tidy job, a lot better than trying to do it with a soldering iron. So that's something you can simply make yourself at home. Uh, you're going to need a good set of shears just for doing a nice round because they just crush all the way around as they cut the cable. Otherwise, if you're trying to use side cutters, you're going to splay the end and it makes it very hard to push through these tiny little uh, 3B4 end nipple, which is common on all of the uh, VM, TM carbs, Makuni carbs we have. This is a nice one because it's actually hollowed out uh, on one side, so when we bunch up the cable, it actually pops down inside it and uh, there's no way that once it's got solder all around it, it's never going to release. And the other one is just your barrels that generally this is a standard 5mm wide by 6mm diameter end barrel. Uh, for inside throttles are going on to uh, carburetors such as these uh, RS carb we've got here. So we're going into them. They come in different widths and sizes. We've got a range of those available on our site. And the throttle and cable section, I think it's on page two, you'll see a picture with a whole bunch of cable end fittings and so on and so forth for doing something like this yourself. Okay, so uh, saying that these things that you do need, the other thing is obviously you've got to determine your cable length. Uh, what you'll do is if you're bored, you've just bought a new VM carburetor or whatever, you'll make sure you've got the right terminal end on your cable. If it's different, you might need to change something there. But uh, basically you'll have it, leave it attached to your throttle, pull it down, get, you've got a measurement of an exposed cable there. And uh, I'm just going to show you on our online store page where we've got some information relating to most of the carburetors. Okay, so you, you need to just determine the length of your exposed cable when you're shortening it to fit a new carburetor. And so here you just go into the McCurney Oz home page and uh, just go into the menu. For instance, we want to look at VM round slide carbs. You go into VM round slide carbs in the main menu, look at the drop list, and we go VM32. So this has a listing of all the different size carbs. We pick either one, they're both the same. Click into the carb for the carb detail. And then when we're in here, you'll notice in the photo gallery, there's a picture here showing a cable. So uh, if you clip on that, uh, and up here, if you're counting the uh, black lines, which are 10 millimetre, you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. You might as well say 80 mil there, allow a little bit for the uh, crush when you um, squash up the end of your cable. So you really need to have uh, this of uh, 32, about 80 mil hanging out the bottom. Okay, so off this picture here, we are now sort of have a rough determination of the amount of exposed cable that's required when it's uh, throttles in the right back position. Uh, for uh, you know, clipping it into your slide and um, always uh, what I do is add another 5mm on there so you can take it an adjustment and also remember when you're on a hard right hand lock uh, bends in the cable does actually shorten up the length of your cable a little bit too so you want to give yourself a 5mm five, five there and then set your cable at hard right lock just leave a little bit of slack in the cable and your job's done all cables should have adjusters um, you know a couple of one or two adjusters and plenty of adjustment in the cable so you're just going to use your uh, vernier or you can use, even use a tape measure measure out that measurement that we've shown you on there add another 5mm on and then just with your shears, you're just going to get a nice clean cut at the length you want after you've measured it. So it's just an example, so I won't get too technical. 
and uh, just make your cut. And now we'll go and uh, show you our bird nesting tool, which uh, um, it's not something you're going to have at home. So the tedious bit at home is you're going to need a pair of long nose pliers to try and duplicate what we're just going to do with a quick head of a hammer and a tool we have here. But uh, once you've done that, um, yeah, we'll show you everything else as it goes. Okay, so here we have our bird nesting tool. So we just slip the nipple over the end of the cable and uh, put this in the tool there. I'm just going to set it at the right height. Tension him up and just one bang. So meanwhile at home you're fiddling around with your long nose pliers. This is all nice and simply done. And uh, what we do here, we've got that hollowed out end, so you see that? We've got a nice little bird's nest there. And then that there, a little pull, just pops that bird nest inside there. And by the time solders around that, that's, that's permanently there. Now I'll do another one for a second example, because there is a difference between these two. Our second example, which is using a barrel um, to go on air, which generally goes onto your throttle or into a, a carburetor on a side pull carburetor. Main difference with using the barrel is the cable has to flex right at the barrel and uh, with the other one using the uh, nipple which generally goes in the top of a carb with a straight pull or into a splitter box it doesn't matter if you've got a bit of creep in your solder when you're soldering but with these you've got to be a, a lot more care taken so that you don't get that solder creep and uh, stiffening up further up the wire so um, they're a bit more of a pain a little bit higher, we set that a bit higher to get a nice larger ball. Sit in there, quick whack, and the same thing. Now we've got a nice, but slightly larger bird's nest sitting in there, and that just sits down on the top of that. Same thing once it's all in place, she's all good to go. So, next thing we're going to just solder the ends on. Okay, so here we just need uh, three things we've got our pot with the uh, 60% tin, 40% lead mixture in there. Uh, you've got baker's flux, which is just a liquid flux for dipping in. And then we've got a uh, glass of water just to quench it as soon as it's finished, which instantly uh, solidifies the solder on the nipple. So with this, you just need something. Just keep a clean surface in there, make sure it's all nicely melted. If you've got any scale or anything on top, you can just wipe it off. Just comes off there. And what we're gonna do with this fella here, I dip them in the flux and then give them 10 seconds in the solder. You've got a little bit of run up the cable but because it's a straight pull it doesn't matter and because of the bird nest there's a nice big bunch of uh, cable inside. Job done, that quick. Okay so here's the second type which is using a barrel. So it slides obviously we've got to be face down and you're trying to keep that flexion as close to the barrel as possible so you have to be careful to really try and avoid any creep up the cable so we dip it in the flux we need to heat the barrel first just dipping the end of the barrel in which will put a heat through everything and then a quick dip just to cover the barrel and then straight into the water so we'll see how we go and we have a little clean up later with the file that's just pretty good i think you'll find it'll fit in and if you put that in a rotor, you'll see that that fits quite nicely in there. There's enough, it's a little bit just up there, but it's not going to affect anything. Okay, so then this is going to plonk into your rotor. And no problem there, plenty of bend on it, goes all the way around. Ready for business. Job done. Okay, well I hope you found that uh, useful. If uh, you still have other questions or uh, couldn't find the information you needed, uh, when you're having a look around the mccooneyoz.com website yourself, uh, you can always drop us an email or give us a telephone call during business hours and uh, one of our technicians will be more than happy to help you out um, and hopefully resolve the situation for you. Uh, apart from that, please do like our uh, video and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that um, as we keep bringing more of these uh, videos out, you'll uh, be notified and um, hopefully you find them interesting and as helpful as this one. Thank you.